Hello everyone, this is Peng Zhang. I'm from Xi'an Jiao Tong University. Um, today I'm happy to share with you our work, APK Real-Time Verification. Hello everyone, this is Peng Zhang. I'm from Xi'an Jiao Tong University. Um, today I'm happy to share with you our work, APK Real-Time Verification for Real Networks. So this is John's work with Xu Liu, Hong Kun Yang, Ning Kang, Zheng Changgu, and Hao Li. So the background is outages are coming our networks and uh, debugging the root causes after outages happen may take a long time, which can be very costly. So a better approach is that we can prevent outages by ensuring network correctness. So in this sense, network vacation provides a set of formal methods that can be used to automatically check network correctness. In this talk, we focus on real-time network verification, which checks whether the data plan state, like FIBS or ECHO, satisfies some correctness properties. And the correctness properties can include reachability, no black holes, no loops, and so on. And the reason for being real-time is that the data plan is often frequently updated by the control plan. So to ensure that data plan is always in a correct state, we need to check the data plan fast enough after each update. So how to achieve such a fast verification speed? A common idea of existing projects is to partition the packet space into equal classes. A equal class is just a set of packets which has the same folding behavior in the network. For example, suppose we have four rules with a single destination IP prefix then there will be two equivalent classes. And uh, based on the equivalent classes, the packet forwarding behavior of the network can be represented using a network model. For example, here we can see a forwarding graph model where each edge is labeled with the equivalent classes that can traverse that edge. So we can directly check the properties on top of this forwarding graph model. When the data plan is updated, before we check the properties, we first need to update the equivalent classes. For example, suppose another rule is inserted, uh, which has a different destination IP address, and this IP address intersects with EC1, so we'll split EC1 into three equivalent classes. Then we can update the network model and check properties on that model. Here we can see that EC3 will experience a loop among switches B, C, and D. Since we can efficiently verify reachability properties on the model, and uh, the key thing to achieve real-time verification is how to fast update the equivalent classes. Redflow and DirtNight can update the equivalent classes for single dimensional folding rules in less than one millisecond. AP Verifier computes the minimal number of equivalent classes, and this is very important to verify general multi-field rules. APKIP also based on this uh, packet equivalent class theory, and it can update the minimal number of equivalent classes, and in addition, it uses new algorithm to fast update the equivalent classes. Even existing real-time verification tools are already very fast, we found it was still challenging to apply them to real networks. And the major reason is to achieve a very fast speed, this method mostly focuses on forwarding functions where devices directly forward packets to some output ports based on FIB entries or open flow rules. Most of the existing de devices in our network, however, have many functionalities beyond forwarding, like filtering traffic based on echoes, writing packet headers, and forwarding packs based on user policies. So um, to apply real-time verification to real networks, the first requirement is that uh, the network model should be expressive enough so it can describe the common functionalities of real devices. And secondly, these devices often match on multiple fields. For example, I post often match on five tuples, 
And we'll show later that this will in introduce uh, scalability issues for equivalent classes. So our second requirement is that uh, the update of equivalent classes should be sc still scalable when there are multiple match fields. Let's see why it's challenging to achieve a scalable update for equivalent classes when there are multiple match fields. First, we can represent an equivalent class with a range or interval. For example, here we have two folding rules match on a 2-bit IP address. Then we only have four equivalent classes. And if we consider another two echo rules that can match our destination port, we need a second layer to further partition the equivalent classes. So the number of equivalent classes will be a product of the number of ranges for each field. And this number can eventually explode, even though there are only a small number of multi-field rules. As can be seen here, for the produced sets consisting of less than 3,000 echo rules, there are already over hundreds of millions of equivalent classes. And this can overwhelm the memory and incur long verification time. Another way is to compute atomic predicates, which are proven to be the minimal number of equivalent classes. So the idea is the number of different folding behaviors in the network is quite small, and all the packets with the same folding behavior can be expressed with a logical predicate. In this example, there are only four different folding behaviors marked in different colors, and they can be encoded with just four atomic predicates. Using atomic predicates, the number of equivalent classes for the previous data set can be reduced to just a few thousand. However, it's rather challenging to update atomic predicates in a fast way. And the reason is each rule update can potentially affect all the atomic predicates, and checking all of them can cost over 10 milliseconds per update. So this talk will introduce APK, which is a new real-time network verifier that can meet the two requirements. First, let's go back to the previous device and see how APK can model it. So a straightforward way is to model it as a single box. However, we found this was not quite extensible. So we choose to decouple the device into a set of functions where each function is modeled as an element. For example, here we have four elements, echo1, echo2, fw, and net. Each of the elements has its own set of rules and also a set of ports. So here a port represents a distinct action on packets. So when a packet comes to an element, it will be forwarded to exactly one port by the element. For example, an echo element has a permit port and deny port. So for the net element, it has a port for each translation rule and also a default ID port, which stands for no translation. And by connecting the ports of elements, we can model the processing logic of this device. So we can see here the model is modular, and this brings us a lot of benefits. For example, we can express more functionalities by chaining elements in some way. In the paper, we show how it can express a policy-based forwarding function, where packets are forwarded based on user-defined policies with five tuples. Currently, we provide three basic, basic types of elements, and we found they are quite enough for expressing the functions that we care about. Where the model also allows more type of elements to be added, so we can express more features and functions. Next, let's see how APKIP can achieve a scalable update based on this network model. First, let's look at what a equivalent class is in our model. Since each port in our model represents a distinct action on packets, so a equivalent class is just a set of packets that appears at the same port 
for each element. And our model supports general representation of equivalent classes, which can be a range or a logical predicate. In this paper, we use atomic predicates for the definition of equivalent class. Well, as we have mentioned, it's rather challenging to fast update atomic predicates. So we designed three efficient operations that can be used to incrementally update atomic predicates in a fast way. We use a simple example to show how these three operations work. In this example, the device has an echo element and a forwarding element. And the forwarding element matches the destination IP address, and the echo element matches the destination IP address and the destination port. Uh, for simplicity, here um, each of the fields has only two bits. Initially, when there are no rules, we have a single predicate A, which is the true predicate representing the set of all packets in the network. And assume the default action of echo is denied, and the default output port is port 1. So predicate A should appear at the deny port of echo and port 1 of the forwarding elements. Now assume uh, echo rule R1 is inserted, whose match fields uh, intersect with the predicate A. So in this case, we will not split or create new predicates because there are no changes of forwarding behavior to any packets. Suppose another echo rule R2 is inserted, which has a lower priority than R1, and due to priorities, it matches the gray area. Since the action of R2 is permit, so packets belonging to this area will change their forwarding behavior from being denied to permitted. So to reflect that change on our model, uh, we transfer those packets from the deny port to the permit port. However, since there is no predicate for expressing those packets, so we first need to create a new predicate B by splitting the predicate A. And after that, we can transfer predicate B to the permit port, and we finish the update. After the update, our model still captures the forwarding behavior in the network. So the key message here is we only need to create new predicates when the forwarding behavior of some packets have been changed. So um, suppose we add another two forwarding rules, um, and after which we create some new predicates. Um, here we can see that the two pred predicates C and E appears as the same part of elements. So this means they have the same forwarding behavior. So we can merge them into a single predicate by just computing a logical disjunction of them. And in a similar way, we can merge the two predicates D and F. And after the merge, we only have four predicates, which are actually uh, the minimal number of equivalent classes for this simple example. And we prove in our paper that APKIP can always maintain the minimal number of equivalent classes after each update. And the major reason for the fast update is because APKIP always inspect a small number of equivalent classes to transfer, split, or merge after each update. And another reason is APKIP decouples the device into a set of elements, so it only needs to update one element each time instead of affecting the whole device. Um, finally, APKIP also supports the updates or rewrite rules, and uh, please refer to our paper for details. Here is a system architecture for APKIP, um, which consists of three layers. The most important part is the model layer, where we read in the device configuration files to build a network model, and we update the model based on the discipline updates, like insertions or deletions, of fib rules or echo rules. Um, we encode the match fields and the packet rewriting actions with binary decision diagram, or BDD. And to achieve that, we use the open source libraries from APVFR and APT. 
On top of the model, we implemented an invariant checker that can check um, reachability properties like loop freedom and black freedom. To evaluate ABK, we use eight datasets in total, which are collected from Stanford, Internet2, Purdue, and DirtNet. The first six datasets only have updates of IP forwarding rules, while the last two have both IP forwarding rules and echo rules. We run apkeep to process each rule update, and after each update, we let apkeep check loops. Um, so the computation time includes the time to update the model, and also the time to verify the properties. Here we can see that for more than 90% of cases, apkeep can verify update date in less than 50 microseconds, if there are only IP forwarding rules and less than 250 microseconds if there are also echo loops. We compare the results with four states or art methods. Since DirtNet only handles one-dimensional match fields, we extend it to process multi-field rules with the multi-layer approach used by uh, Veriflow. Here we can see that APKeep achieves a comparable verification time with DirtNet for IP forwarding rules, and both of them are much faster than the other three methods. However, for the last two datasets with echo rules, only APKeep can verify updates in less than one millisecond. Especially for the Purdue dataset, all the methods either time out or run out of memory well, APKeep can still be very fast. So to conclude, APKeep can check the correctness of data plan consisting of real devices and in real time. So um, to achieve that, it builds on a modular network model, which is expressive and also extensible. In addition, APKeep uses a new method that can fast update the minimal number of equal classes in less than one millisecond. Our future work includes extending APKeep to check operator intents besides reachability properties, and we also plan to make the update of predicates in parallel. So, thanks for watching this video and uh, I'm happy to take any questions through this email.